In Hawaii, where about half a million tourists come every month, there's a place that's forbidden even for the state governor. That's the island of Nihau, access to which has been restricted for 150 years. The family that's owned it since the middle of the 19th century bans not only officials and casual tourists from visiting Nihau, even rare guests can visit only certain places and are strictly forbidden to contact the local population. And there are multiple mysterious islands closed for various reasons. So, what's happening on these islands and what are Nihau's owners hiding there? Nihau is a small Hawaiian island with an arid climate. Its area is only 180 square kilometers. But in 1864, the monarch of the Kingdom of Hawaii, Kamehameha V, sold it for a reasonable, at the time, amount of $10,000. Nihau and several agricultural plots on the neighboring island were bought by Elizabeth Sinclair. This wealthy landowner sold all her property in New Zealand and sailed halfway around the world to buy a piece of land in Hawaii. She moved with her family to a small ranch on Nihau and brought a shipload of sheep and crops. That same year, Elizabeth Sinclair closed the island to outsiders. From that moment on, not only tourists, but also fishers from the neighboring island and even the government couldn't enter Nihau. The ban on visiting it is still in place. Even the governor of Hawaii doesn't have access to the island. But why did the Sinclair family introduce the ban? Perhaps that's just a precaution and being on Nihau is life-threatening. As for example on Ila da Queimada Grande, the Brazilian government closed access to the island for safety reasons. The thing is that here, on an area of 40 three hundredths of a square kilometer, there are about 400,000 poisonous snakes, including the very rare Bothrops insularis. The snake is on the verge of extinction and can live only in one place in the world, on the island of Ila de Queimada Grande. Scientists have counted only up to 4,000 individuals there. Bothrops lives in the wooded part of the island and preys on local birds and other snakes. Due to human interference, the population of rare Bothrops insularis has been reduced by almost 50% over the past 15 years. To avoid disturbing the fragile ecosystem and preserve the endangered species, the Brazilian government has closed the island to people. At least, that's one of the reasons. In fact, being on the island is just dangerous for life. After all, the bite of Bothrops insularis kills not only birds and insects, it can also be fatal to humans. Even if the antidote is administered in time, there's still a 3% chance of dying. You see, this snake's venom can cause both immediate death and long-term health effects. For example, kidney failure, muscle tissue necrosis at the bite site, intestinal bleeding, and even a cerebral hemorrhage. And besides both rops, there are dozens of other poisonous snakes on the island. There are no official death statistics on Ila de Camada Grande. However, there are legends among the coastal dwellers about fishermen who got caught in a storm off the island's coast and didn't return. But no matter how dangerous the island is, sailors of the Brazilian Navy land on it at least once a year. They visit the lighthouse for maintenance. The lighthouse is now automatic, but until 1920, a few lighthouse keepers lived on the island permanently, and according to local legend, one of them died with his family when snakes entered through the window of his room at night. Anyway, the Brazilian government now fully controls access to the island. Only representatives of the Navy and scientists are allowed there, and all the groups are necessarily accompanied by a doctor with an antidote for snake venom. Nihau, like Ila da Queimada Grande, is also home to rare species. For example, monk seals in plants that are on the verge of extinction. But there are no poisonous snakes or dangerous predators on the island. Moreover, Nihau is an inhabited island with about 130 indigenous people. 
Can the danger of visiting the island be related to them? North Sentinel Island in the Indian Ocean has been closed to people for the past 60,000 years. Any attempt to land on its shore ends in tragedy, and all because the island's indigenous population does not allow strangers onto their territory. The island of almost 60 square kilometers is home to between 39 and 400 Sentinelese. This is a unique tribe that's evolved in complete isolation and has never had contact with the outside world. The island is formerly part of India, but in fact, the country's laws don't work on its territory. The tribe was first discovered in 1771. Back then, a merchant ship of the British East India Company sailed past and noticed many lights on the island, but people landed here only 100 years later and not of their own will. In 1867, an Indian ship was wrecked off the coast of North Sentinel Island. 106 surviving passengers and crew members came ashore. There, a local tribe attacked them with their bows and arrows. The group of survivors had to defend themselves until they were evacuated by a Royal Navy ship. And that was just the beginning. In the 19th century, the British repeatedly attempted to land on the island and establish contact with the Sentinelese. Once, they took along representatives of the Anj, indigenous people from the neighboring Andaman Islands, but they couldn't understand the language of the local tribe. The Sentinelese had been isolated for far too long, and their culture, customs, and even ways of communicating were unlike those of neighboring tribes. The only thing the outside world learned about them was that the Sentinelese were very good at archery. In 1974, a National Geographic film crew went to North Sentinel to shoot a documentary about the local tribe. They brought gifts, coconuts, pots, a doll, and a live pig. But when the journalists came ashore and laid offerings on the sand in front of them, the Sentinelese appeared from the forest with their bows raised. They shot arrows at both the film crew and their gifts. After the wounded journalists fled back to the ship, the locals buried all their offerings in the sand on the beach. Each. In 2011, the Indian authorities officially prohibited anyone from approaching North Sentinel any closer than 9 kilometers, but attempts to establish contact with the locals continued. In 2018, an American missionary, John Allen Chow, decided to visit North Sentinel to spread Christianity among the indigenous tribe. He bribed two fishermen from a nearby island and went with them to North Sentinel, which he called Satan's last stronghold on Earth. In two days, he made four attempts to establish contact with the Sentinelese. John landed on the island with gifts and a waterproof Bible, but every time he was met with hostility. On his last visit, the missionary told the fishermen to leave him on the island and sail home. The next day, they watched from the boat as tribespeople dragged Chow's body along the beach and buried his remains. The authorities never managed to get him off the island. Ni Hao is also home to a relatively closed community of ethnic Hawaiians. They speak a peculiar Ni Hao dialect and preserve their ancestral traditions, but they're not hostile to the outside world or isolated from civilization. Ni Hao has a school and health insurance is available to the island's residents. Some homes have radios and TVs, and the local population actively votes in elections. At the same time, there's no phone service on Ni Hao, and rare visitors invited to the island are forbidden to contact or even approach the local population. The only people who can interact with the residents of Ni Hao are the personnel of the U.S. military base located on the island. The military often uses closed islands for their own purposes. Such islands often host military bases or are used for exercises, but sometimes frightening experiments are conducted on the islands. Grignard Island in northern Scotland was the site of one such experiment. In that small area of two square kilometers, in the late 19th century, there were only six inhabitants. And in the early 20th century, the island became uninhabited. It was used for sheep herding, fishing, and as a popular picnic spot. But during the Second World War, Gunyard was purchased by the UK Ministry of Defense, and access to it was closed for 48 years. That's because they decided to turn the island into a biological weapons 
testing site. After a series of lab tests, the British government decided to build an anthrax bomb. The spores of this infection can enter the body in various ways, through the skin, lungs, and esophagus. Depending on this, the disease can develop in several ways. In case of contact with a wound or damage in a human body, the bacterium causes black sores on the body. This is the most harmless form of anthrax. Without treatment, death occurs in 20% of cases. If you eat the meat of an infected animal, the infection will affect the gastrointestinal tract. The person will suffer from abdominal pain and intestinal inflammation and vomit blood. With this form of the disease, mortality occurs in 60% of cases. In respiratory form, the bacterium enters the lymph nodes located in the thorax. This causes fluid to accumulate in the chest cavity. This triggers shortness of breath and flu-like symptoms. If you don't receive proper treatment, anthrax will move into its second stage, pneumonia. The infection progresses rapidly, leading to pulmonary edema and death within 48 hours. Mortality in this case reaches 90%. But the biggest advantage of anthrax for the military is not even high mortality rates, but the survivability of its spores. To test the effectiveness of anthrax bombs, a flock of sheep was brought to Grignard Island. The animals were tethered so that they were unaffected by the explosions but were close enough to the epicenter and got infected with spores. Three days after the researchers detonated the anthrax bomb, the animals died. They fell to the ground and their bodies bled. But the most terrible consequences were yet to come. Not only did the anthrax spores survive the blast and infect the sheep, but they also contaminated the soil on the island. The military had to treat the land on the island with 280 tons of formaldehyde solution and take some of the contaminated soil to a hazardous waste burial site. And only after almost half a century of quarantine, the UK Ministry of Defense returned Grignard to its former owners. The military on Nihau often hires local residents for exercises. The Hawaiians play the role of enemy trackers and special purpose units trained to neutralize them. But is it possible that the islanders are used for more ominous tests? After all, there has to be a good reason why the island's owners prohibited visitors from contacting the indigenous population. In addition, the islanders have to follow rather strange rules. For example, native Hawaiians aren't allowed to wear earrings or grow out their hair. The current owners of Nihau, brothers Keith and Bruce Robinson, great-grandsons of Elizabeth Sinclair, threaten violators with lifelong banishment from the island. But the weirdest prohibition is that the Robinsons don't allow the building of pipes on the island. The inhabitants of Nihau are forced to collect rainwater and use it for their needs. The islanders' owners believe that this preserves the unique way of life and culture of the indigenous people. However, Nihau often experiences severe droughts. For such periods, the Robinsons evacuate the population to the neighboring island of Kauai. Yes, you got that right. The inhabitants of Nihau are allowed to leave their island. Some islanders even move to Kauai in search of work. This means the military doesn't conduct any secret tests on the island. Otherwise, its borders would be closed to the locals. But even those Hawaiians who have left Nihau must observe one major rule, not to tell anything about life on the island. It looks like the owners really want to hide something. The Sinclair family and their descendants are the sole owners of Nihau. But in fact, other buyers were also interested in this unremarkable island. For example, the 32nd President of the United States, Franklin Roosevelt. In 1944, he planned to buy Nihau to move the UN headquarters there. It's believed that he offered the owners to buy the island for a billion dollars, but they refused. And that's weird, because the Sinclair Robinson family never made much money off the island. Until 1999, there was a ranch on Nihau where the family raised cattle, but over time it fell into disrepair and closed, leaving most of the islanders unemployed. However, even today, one of the owners, Keith Robinson, said he'll never agree to sell Nihau. But why? 
Perhaps something more valuable than a billion dollars is hidden on the island. For example, rare artifacts related to ancient Hawaiian beliefs. Until the mid-19th century, native Hawaiians were pagans. They worshipped gods and sacrificed to them in special sanctuaries, heiaus. But after 1819, King Kamehameha II, under the influence of missionaries, ordered the destruction of sanctuaries and idols. So today, the surviving attributes of Hawaiian beliefs are very rare, and they are probably collectors willing to pay good money for them. But native Hawaiians are superstitious about their shrines, so much so that they're not ready to sell them. Just like the parishioners of one of the richest Hindu temples in the world, Padmanabha Swami. This temple in India is famous for its treasures and the forbidden door that can't be entered. The thing is that there are six ancient vaults in the dungeons of the temple. Each of them contains gold and jewels. For example, in Vault A, opened in 2011, they found thousands of ancient gold coins, a diamond-encrusted throne, and about a hundred thousand other valuable objects. The Indian authorities have already opened the doors of all the vaults, except for one. Vault B is still closed. In 2014, the museum staff tried to find out what was in there. They managed to open the first two doors of the vault, but the third door didn't budge. The researchers wanted to involve a professional locksmith, but they didn't have time. India's Supreme Court prohibited them from even trying to open the third door. According to ancient Hindu texts, the sixth door of the Panabhaswami temple is guarded by an ancient serpent deity, and it can be opened only by a special person who knows a special mantra. If you try to open the door by force, it could lead to disaster. Therefore, out of respect for religious feelings, India's Supreme Court forbade opening the last door, even though countless treasures can be hidden behind it. Native Hawaiians may have similar superstitions associated with the attributes of their ancient religion. However, rare artifacts could cause completely different feelings in the island's owners, especially since the Robinson family is constantly looking for various ways to make money on the island. For example, although access to Nihau is closed, you can still get on a tour of it. The owners organize helicopter tours to the island, costing slightly over $600 per person. In addition, for $3,000 per person, tourists can go on a family safari. There, you can hunt wild sheep, boars, and oryx. Meanwhile, in 2013, Bruce Robinson asked the Hawaiian authorities to ban the inhabitants of the neighboring island from even fishing in the waters of Nihau. The island's owners claim that they've closed Nihau to outsiders to preserve the indigenous people's unique culture, and all their bizarre bans are necessary to maintain the authenticity of the Hawaiian way of life. But every year, an increasing number of Aboriginal people leave the island searching for work in a better life, and Nihau is still closed. Any idea why?